one of the questions that I get asked the most about at the markets is, are you organic? And it's kind of a funny question that would trip me up into giving this kind of funny response of, oh, yes, but we're not certified organic or no, uh, but we're spray free. And a lot of the time people were really happy with that. Um, but there was one time I distinctly remember a customer asking me, are you guys organic? And I gave her this kind of flip floppy answer of, you know, we're not certified organic, but you know, we're spray free and yes. And, and she said, oh, okay. And then she left <laughs> and it was like this eye opening moment of, oh wow, you know, this really is something that is important to a lot of people. And I think when you do buy something that does say it's organic or certified organic, it gives a layer, a level of trust and a level of, of confidence in the product and how it was grown. So it was something that I thought about right from the beginning. It was something that me and my dad discussed when we very first started working on the market garden. Are we going to be organic? And we decided that it wasn't something we needed to do right away. It was kind of like, well, hold on, look, we're starting a garden, we're starting a business. Is that something we really need at this stage or is it something that we can think about later? So that's what happened. Um, and it wasn't until, yeah, we, we had a really great summer at the farmer's market and I, I fielded that question a lot, are you organic? So. I decided it was something that I needed to look into, especially with the developments that I made in the business over the winter. Um, we were selling, uh, well, predominantly at the farmer's market. Uh, so I was always there. I was always happy to answer questions. And I think when people are buying something directly from the person who grew it, there's a lot more trust there. Over the winter, that farmer's market closed down. So I had been working really hard on how I was going to continue to operate this business, basically. I did manage to have a huge breakthrough and I installed my own Grow My Goodness refrigerator in a local store. And that has been going really, really well. There's been a lot of support and it's been really fun. It's also been scary and kind of stressful. But again, in doing that, I wasn't there to sell my own product. Now I was, you know, kind of relying on somebody else. And I was thinking about the type of questions that, you know, this person was going to get in the store about my product. A lot of the other products in the store already are... Um, focused around sustainability and organic and natural products. So it was just something that came up a lot recently. I talked to a friend of mine who also has a market garden um, nearby and they are certified organic. So I started talking to her about how she did it. She actually came onto the property and we looked around and I was saying, oh, you know, I don't think I can do it because of this or, you know, what about that? And it actually was something that she said to me was that, you know, if you want to do it, you can do it. It's, it's not too hard. Um, you will be fine. Just go for it if you want to do it. And now is a good time because the way that the certification works, it only happens once a year. So I jumped in. I started, you know, getting to work on the paperwork, which was actually probably the hardest part of the whole thing. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks, I would say, to get that paperwork right initially. Um, probably something that's a little bit more time consuming now that I've done it the first time. You can kind of just keep it up to date and it should be okay. But I, I did all the paperwork, um, you know, and we had an audit and an auditor came round and I talked to, um, you know, the certification manager and all of these people and finally after after a couple of months actually the process was I finally got to the first stage of being certified organic I got the certificate I went and printed it out 
and I put it in a holder and um, that came with me to the very first farmers market that we had on the weekend. And um, I had feedback actually, people noticed. Um, some people had, you know, noticed from that it was a change from the year before. I wasn't previously certified organic and congratulated it, me on it. Um, so I think it was a pretty significant, you know, investment that I, that I made into the garden and into this business because you know not only does it actually cost money to to do the certification it also took a lot of my time to do it but now it's done the, uh, we're in the first stage it takes a couple of years before you become fully certified um, I'm already seeing the benefits of it uh, do I think it is completely necessary to do I think that that is completely it's completely up to you and your situation for me and obviously you know the location that we're in and the customers that we have being organic and being certified it is something that's important to people so it made sense for me to give it a go hardest part of the whole process was the paperwork and um, I have found in, through talking to other people about this process that in New Zealand it can be difficult to get organic inputs um, and actually be, part of this process included having a soil test. So we got the soil test done and I had a consultant come out to the farm do the soil test and then come back and speak with me about the results and what we needed um, and there's a lot of science involved it took me back to high school and I, I tried my best to understand it but I was really grateful that we actually decided to go with a consultant for it so they knew that we were doing you know transitioning to certified organic and were able to kind of prescribe me amendments to our soil, um, things to do with the pH of our soil and uh, the fertility of the soil. So now I had this little formula that I use and uh, the one thing that I haven't really been able to find a good substitute for is seed raising mix. I'm currently having a go at um, making my own. I, I know other people that are using some brands of, they offer certified organic seed raising mix but it's really expensive so I'm I've, I've actually got um, quite a big delivery of certified organic compost I'll head down that way and show you um, that was really exciting that just happened in the last couple of weeks I've used a lot of it because we've been expanding the garden but um, yeah I've kind of been experimenting with making my own seed raising mix using this certified organic compost delivery that we got so um, I had my uncle help me build this kind of what is it what would you call this bay for it um, so the truck backed in it was 11 ton so it was definitely the largest delivery of compost that we've ever had and we've already used a lot of it um, but yeah so there's been a little bit of changing of suppliers and just approaching things slightly differently and a lot of record keeping um, part of being certified organic means that you keep records of all of the inputs that are going into the farm and um, where they come from and you know their certification status so uh, how much you're using and when you're using it so a lot of record keeping which has been different for me which is actually something that's a little bit challenging because it takes time and I think something that you'll know um, if you do gardening particularly at this time of the year in spring is that you don't have a lot of time or sometimes it just feels like your time is better spent actually in the garden doing physical work and I've had to really force myself to like sit down and actually keep my records accurate so that at the end of the year it's really easy and I don't have to spend several weeks trying to get everything together. 
So that's the journey we're on now. Um, it's it's going well. It's obviously I, I definitely think it's going to take a few years. Um, oh, and yeah, one other thing is that um, be, because I started supplying to this retail local retail outlet it actually gave me some really good exposure and I had another store then contact, le contact me directly to start purchasing our, our products off us and again this is a store that is really focused on organic uh, produce so it made sense um, to me to do it. I know a lot of farms have this question of should I do it should I not do it and I just think that it completely depends on your situation, where you're selling your product, you know, and how strongly your customer base feels about um, whether organic produce is something that they would prefer to buy. Well, that's pretty much going to be it for this very short little update that I had for you guys. I know that there's a lot going on in the garden and a lot that you guys haven't seen. And I do plan to show you guys a lot more things like how we're doing our tomatoes this year. What's up with these new big insect neck sheets that are all over the garden. And um, I've also had a lot of questions um, about our irrigation and how that all works so I've got lots of plans for new videos for you guys I know that I haven't been posting a lot of videos over the past couple of months but it is spring now I'm feeling a renewed sense of energy here in the garden and I want to show you guys all of the cool new stuff that's happening if you're new here thank you guys so much for subscribing I know this there's been a lot of new subscribers that have been watching a lot of the old videos so I'm gonna um yeah I'm gonna get some more new New content up for you guys if you have any um, questions or things that you want to see me make videos about please drop me a comment down below and um, that's just gonna help me get back on my YouTube journey and bring you guys along with me here in the market garden if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.